Bougie and Musings podcast. This is a podcast about navigating through life via pleasure while incorporating magic and spirituality. And we are your hosts, your friendly neighborhood witch bitch day, sweet daughter of the moon and stars Pika, and I'm Ari, your favorite child of the universe. And together we are the darlings of Venus. Now each week we'll be discussing a certain topic of interest, be it creepy or spiritual, however it will not just be limited to that. We'll also bring you some fun content, including our favorite pop culture hot take of the moment, but also we will very much explore much needed cons or con- yeah, conversations <laughs> about the ongoings of our world. We are here to help you through it. We will start each episode with a quick forecast of the astro weather of the week dive into our topic and then at the end of each episode I will be um, pulling a tarot card of the week. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Okay, so uh, we're, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. Um, go ahead, Day. Hello, I am Day, your friendly neighborhood witch bitch. Um, my big threes are uh, I'm an Aries sun, Aquarius moon, and Gemini rising. Uh, my divination tool is mainly uh, tarot. I do palm readings and dream interpretation. Um, so I've been practicing about for um, about 18 years. Um, but I'm, like I said, my main tool is tarot. Uh, I, try, I, I truly find tarot to be like a therapeutic tool. And for me and for others, growing up, spirituality was uh, very welcoming. I was never told like, which you feel is like dark or evil, even though my parents were, came back, like the background was mainly Southern Baptist esque. Mm. <laughs> and, um, but even when I had like bad dreams or like, like had spirits in them or anything like that, my mom was like, how did, how did it make you feel? What was in it? What was going on? Like, if I saw, if I said I saw uh, a spirit or something, she was always like very like, we need to do a cleansing, we need to do a blessing, like, these things are always welcome to my house, like, I remember, like, almost every month we do a cleansing in the house, or, like, have, like, holy water or something, it just pays having a scarf wheel for a mother, I mean, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, that's actually, that's really nice, and I like that, even though you kind of had, like, a, kind of, like, a religious background, yeah. that your, your mom was still very open Yeah, she it. was, she was never, like, oh, you're going to go to hell if you feel these things, or, you're a witch, so you might, you shouldn't be doing that witch, stuff. Witch, witch, witch. <laughs> so yeah, it was very like, like I said, it was very welcoming. Like it was like even now, like with my spirituality, she's just asking me like, so have you seen anything or like do you, do you have any creepy ghost stories you want to tell me about? Like she's like very like <laughs> very encouraging. Yeah, she's sipping her tea, yeah. just waiting for you to come home. Be like yeah, yeah. I mean, we were sharing ghost stories like last. <laughs> I mean, like she came over like last month and she was sharing ghost stories with me, and I was like what what like things i didn't even hear about when i was younger because she was too scared to tell me oh okay but like uh. she was like i'm gonna tell you now because you're older <laughs> and you can handle this stuff and you've been obviously had been about it <laughs> so yeah she knew all yeah, you've always been <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good i'm glad that she recognized that in you yeah. <laughs> like i said scorpio's being you know mm, Scorpio are. vibes. I feel you on that. <laughs> my mom's also a Scorpio, but I'll get into that when I introduce myself. Um, awesome. So you did have a religious background, but you still were, was had a very open household yeah, when yeah. it came to I a was, cult. Even even like my sexuality was never like been downplayed. Like it, it, it was very. She always like is come as you are kind okay. of thing. Like so, when I come around with like my pentagrams and my dark clothing, she's like, "Oh, you look cute." Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. that's see that's the kind of that's what we want that's that's the openness the, yes yeah, that's yeah. the kind of acceptance and open it opening that we want i think you need to give your mom a goth girl makeover let's totally do that yeah, do that on our yeah, channel she would, love uh. the, she would love that actually <laughs> she awesome. would love a morticia vibe yeah i would tell her to dress up with morticia and she, i mean i think she needs to be like pushed into it 
Okay, we're yeah. gonna. Okay. We'll be that push for her. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mama, we're coming for you. We're coming for you. <laughs> this is gonna happen. And she will be listening, just so you guys know. Yay. <laughs> She's super excited about this. Just awesome. so you know, future episode. Yes, this is happy lady mom. <laughs> <laughs> we should do an episode where we make over our moms. Basically, we should, we'll do that for our channel, for yeah. our YouTube channel. Yeah, definitely. I think my mom would be totally into that. Okay, awesome. Because I did want to do an episode with my sister. She might not trust me to do makeup, but she don't. She don't know. She don't know. She don't know. <laughs> Which is funny because I also wanted to do that with my sister too. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. We could gotta got up our idea. sisters. Yeah. Why don't I just uh, notice your shirt? No. <laughs> I'm wearing a sounds gay. I'm in shirt. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's just the vibe. That that's the motherfucking, motherfucking vibe. <laughs> the motherfucking vibe. But anyway, yeah, that's mostly my background. And like, even with my sister, she's very spiritually in tune to like, I wish she would. Anyway. <laughs> so it runs in the family, it runs right? in the, No, completely runs okay. in the family. Like, mainly my sister, my mom, and me. Like, I feel like other people in my family may have, like, that intuition, but, like, they don't really speak about it. But me, my sister, my mom, just, like, we're open about it. We're like, do you guys feel that? Do you guys see that? Do you guys feel about this? <laughs> like, we're always, like, we always have those powwows. We're sitting down talking about what creepy spiritual thing that has happened to us. Like, always. That's always been, like, the open topic of, like, like a dinner conversation. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, all right, so I wanted to ask you, since you will be doing our tarot readings for uh, the podcast, Yeah. Um, give us a little bit of background of your intro to tarot and your experience with it. Well, my intro to tarot uh, happened when I was probably like 10 or 11, I would say. But I really didn't get into it again until like a little bit after high school. Um and mostly because my friends were giving me readings and like you were giving me readings even um Irma was giving me readings mm -hmm. our, one of our friends and um I I remember Irma and I used to do readings together and we would have you there to help interpret because you were really good at it yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and it, it, it was weird I never ha I never I never understood why I was so good at interpreting the uh tarot and I and I still don't know why and that's it's just a great thing like I, I feel like that's like, it's my bread and butter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, oh, when I look at a card, I'm just like, I know what this is about. Or I look at a whole reading, I'm like, I know exactly what's going on. I know exactly what's going on with you. Usually, I would give an example. One of my friends, I won't say his name, I, he had an issue this week, and I just wanted to give, an, like, just to know what was he, he was he, what was he about, I gave him a reading. Mm -hmm. And I... I, he already knew everything that was going on with him, obviously, but I wanted to know what was going on with him. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a reading, he was like, yeah, that's what's going on with me. I'm pretty sure, I knew you were going to say that, but I wanted to see what your reading was going to be like. Because mm -hmm. he sees my post on my Instagram. Shout out to Friendly Neighborhood Witch Bitch at <laughs> on my Witch Instagram bitch. and Twitter. Witch bitch. <laughs> but um, I didn't know what was going on with him in, in his background or what's been going on with him. And I gave him a reading right then and there, like a three card reading. Mm -hmm. And I knew everything that was going on with him and his family and all the issues that he was dealing with just from the three cards. And, you know, that's, and it was very therapeutic for him. And I, I love that about Tara. Like, of course. It's, just, it, it, it's an insight for me, mm -hmm. for your life. Like, if you're asking for help, it's an insight for me. But it's also therapeutic. To, and there and uh what's the word i'm looking for cathartic cathartic yeah yeah <laughs> to see like oh someone understands what i'm going through yeah someone yeah. can relate what i'm going through and i'm not a charlatan i'm not going to charge you like 10 bucks to like mm -hmm. oh like here's some insight give me some money like mm -hmm. you know, usually my readings are usually always free i've never accepted money unless you like make me take money <laughs> right but um recently um i would say about three or four years ago i really well, maybe like maybe like five years ago, right when I moved back to Denver, right when I moved to Denver, um, one of my uh, coworkers she gave me a tarot card deck. Mm -hmm. It was because I gave her a reading. Mm -hmm. um, we we're just at her house smoking weed, whatever, chilling, and she and she just pulled it out randomly. Like she had a box of tarot cards, like from like reaching back. And she, to mind you, she's an older woman, so mm -hmm. back from like when she was my age, like in her early twenties. She got this collection of tarot cards, like from Ireland, because she's Irish, and mm -hmm. all over the uh, all over the world that she's lived, all these places that she's lived, and people just giving these tarot cards. And I'm like, what? I never knew this about you. It was, mm -hmm. it was a complete surprise. Uh -huh. And I got the deck that I felt like you know I was connected to, grabbed it, and I gave her a reading right then and there. And she's like, you know what? 
you're so accurate, I'm gonna give those cards to you. Yes. So I, it's the only deck I still use to this day. Mm. And um, I even gave Pika her first, uh, her tarot card set. Um, but it's just, it's just funny like how the universe just pushes you into situations like that. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't expecting her for her to pull out a box exactly. of tarot cards. Exactly. And, giving her a reading like that and like I had no idea about her uh, her witchcraft background or anything like that until mm -hmm. that moment it was mm -hmm. bizarre but the you know that's what it is like this up for you I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. And I completely agree. I feel like a lot of people, when they have their spiritual awakenings, it's not that they've chose this path. It's right. that the universe kind of, you know, kind of like guided them to it. Yeah, like, and it's, mm -hmm. I feel like it, it's always been pushing me this way. It's mm -hmm. always like, I mean, like I said, my background from my childhood is always like questioning the, the world around me mm -hmm. and trying to affect that change and trying to understand that change and, and, I use tarot as a way to do that. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Yes, thank you for that, Dave. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. All right, perfect. So we'll also go ahead and introduce you to Pika, our other co-host here. Go ahead, Pika. Yo, yo, yiggity, yo. This is your sweet baby angel. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because she is our sweet baby angel. I'm, I'm sweet, sweet baby, baby angel, angel Pika. <laughs> I'm a Gemini sun, Aquarius moon, and Scorpio rising. I'm considered a baby witch compared to these two. <laughs> I also do tarot, as Day said. He gave me my first deck. Mm -hmm. And then I mainly do dream interpretations, which I'm starting to get really good at those. Yeah, yeah you're super ideas. good at dream interpretation. <laughs> mm -hmm. We go to Pika for all of our dreams, pretty much. Which I have to tell you about a dream I had earlier. Mm -hmm. but I was, Girl, yes, I've been having some intense dreams lately, too. Like, all like, last night, I was like having this the most intense weird <laughs> dreams. Anyway. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> we'll talk about this after we yes. are recording. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pika. So I grew up in a house that believed in witchcraft, but they didn't really practice it. They considered it bad. Like, there was one time I was looking at a photo album, and a piece of my hair fell in the photo album, and I was told to quickly get it, or else a witch is going to come and get me and curse me. <laughs> that, or when I cut my hair... I could also not leave anything on the floor. I had to sweep it all up. What? Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, was your family religious? They were. So my mom is Catholic, and then my dad's side of the family, or at least he was seven-day Adventist. What is that? <laughs> it's when you go to church on Saturdays. Oh. Because <laughs> the Saturday like, is a lull a day. <laughs> that is a whole day Saturday. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> So instead of Sunday being God's day, it's Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the only Seventh difference. Day, Same yeah. Christian so values. He needs the extra day to recover. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sunday is a hungover day. Exactly. Uh, he see, said, I turned wine to wine on Saturday, girl. Uh, I turned on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you got rest on Sunday. <laughs> The days doesn't start until I say it starts. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and then you gotta do it all again on Monday. That's funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, perfect. So, all right. So you said that because of that, your family was a little bit more superstitious and um, wary of um, witchcraft in general. Did they consider it like devilish? Was did they consider it to be kind of the devil's work? For the most part, yes. Like, I wasn't allowed to be around, like, any black cats. It was bad luck. Very they're, superstitious. They're very superstitious. It's old school. I think it's a brown people thing. To be honest, at least, like, a Filipino black brown okay. people thing. Yeah. 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 yeah it, I can see it that way. I feel like yeah. it's just a religious thing. It, I, um, I definitely think it's a brown people religious thing, especially if your culture had been uh, influenced by, like, colonization. Especially the Philippines. They were heavily, yeah. like, Catholic. They still have, like, Catholic traditions. They mm -hmm. still follow. I feel like I don't know much about Christianity in general, aside from what I know about pop culture and what I've read about it, but I it's feel like... It's kind of funny because Catholicism is... This, well, voodoo is a sect of Catholicism, and that's in that sense. Really? Yeah, it is. So they have saints they pray to, which they had to cover up by using the saints' candles, but they're actually praying to the Loa. That, yeah, might, okay, yeah. that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. yeah. See, and that's what so I was going to So you go to like, a lot of houses in New Orleans, and you walk into their houses, and you like see a bunch of saints and everything, but it's like, it's like a cover-up for 
and they had to do that because you know colonization mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. their religion okay that makes a lot of sense actually yeah. oh, okay oh god darn yeah. the white man <laughs> we'll definitely be doing an episode about this yeah i will mean, definitely get into deep topics about voodooism because i mm-hmm. know yes. a lot <laughs> well it's yes. your ancestor yes, uh, yes. yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the great things about this podcast is that each of your hosts here we all have a very brown background. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We all have very unique perspectives that we will bring into this podcast. So that's another thing that we really wanted to focus on because as Pika was introducing earlier, we won't just be having fun gossipy content or spooky content. We'll also be talking about some serious things as well. Of course. Yes. Because, you know, that's 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 the brown people life. That's a So wrong. how did your family feel about your practicing now? Mm-hmm. Like, shun it or do they ignore it or well my mom was my mom so yeah yeah. my sister my sister she likes it she comes to me she's like hey tell me about my dream she's like can you come over and stage my house because weird stuff is (laughs) happening here yeah when i was at your bridal shower she was like asking a bunch of questions i was like oh you're into this (laughs) (laughs) she's getting she's getting curious about it i'm actually gonna get her her first little crystal set i think for christmas that's sweet she was like what crystals can i have for like good juju (laughs) (laughs) so is your do you feel like does it run in your family too when it comes to your abilities I feel like, okay, another thing is that we're all very sensitive people, Pika included. Um, So go ahead and give us some examples of your sensitivities. For the most part, the only thing that comes to my mind was my sister. A month before she announced that she was pregnant, I already knew she was pregnant the second that she didn't even know she was pregnant. (laughs) So so we were, me and her friends were all out drinking, Uh and she was eating... Food that she normally doesn't eat. I'm like, that's weird. You're pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't tell her that. I just (laughs) thought that. I was like, there's something weird. There's something off about you. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Spell her energies. Yeah. And then she called me a month later. She was like, I'm pregnant. I was like, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Don't really tell me. I I was like, I know. (laughs) You don't got to tell me. I know. That or if there's people that I haven't talked to in a long while, I just come think about them. I'm like, I should check on them. Something's happening. That actually happened with Mikey. I felt like something was off. And then a week later is when it happened. I was like, oh. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Usually when that happens, I have a dream about the person. No, Mm -hmm. I just have a random feeling. I could be just chilling on my bed. I'm like, I wonder how this person is doing. (laughs) Wow. Mm -hmm. That's kind of sad, actually. Yeah. Well, given the context of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, that's how I felt it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, Pika, your tool of definitions, um, you said you've gotten really good at dream interpretation. Um, can you give us a little bit of your some information with your experiences on that? Well, mostly with you two, because you two come to me with your dreams the most. <laughs> yes, so... <laughs> so what we do is we have a note of all the dreams that we have, no matter how weird or fantastic they are. I'm the only one who has fantastic dreams, apparently. Yes. I dream about food and <laughs> shopping. Yeah, you have, like, the good dreams. I usually dream about, like, demons and spirits chasing me or mm-hmm. about sex but like that's neither here or there but yeah, it happens exactly. sex happens yeah but usually my dreams are pretty intense in that yeah sense the only time i remember the only times i ever remember my dreams are when shit's going down yeah <laughs> right it's not a pleasurable dream i remember which is really funny <laughs> Very rarely do I get pleasurable dreams. Right. That's why I try to live it out in my life. Right. <laughs> That's why you come to me and I'm like, what's happening with your life? I'm feeling a little stress. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. At the beginning of quarantine, I was having like a series of nightmares and it took me a little bit to realize that I was just extremely stressed out. Oh, uh, yeah, a series of unfortunate events in your dreams. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was some shit. We'll probably cover that in an episode later in the future. Definitely. <laughs> dreams should, should definitely be an episode we have. <laughs> For like, sure. Don't worry, I got plans. Yes. Yes. Perfect. I talk about the most common dreams and what they mean and, like, sleep paralysis and reoccurring dreams and all that fun stuff. Oh, that's I awesome. I sleep paralysis dream. I 
I had a couple actually when I moved back in for my mom temporarily. Those were the that. only times when I had sleep paralysis dreams. Really? Uh huh. It's been a while since I've had those. Yeah, I, I they're scary I, though. Yeah, they're pretty mm-hmm. intense. I, the last time I had one, I think I was living at the Brigada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's like the first year. Yeah, that was the first time I had it, and then I had a couple after that with Zach. But you know, that's a different story. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> it was when I was planning this wedding. I was very stressed, oh, so yeah, I had a lot is. of sleep paralysis dreams. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that because that's something I'm very interested in. I don't, I don't experience a lot, but I do have a lot of friends who are very familiar with it. Um, Our body experiences too. Yeah. Yeah. I had reoccurring dreams because I. Yeah. I always had the same reoccurring dreams or places. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. definitely a thing Like, for me. the Disneyland in my mind and the shopping mall in my mind is completely different than any place actually here. Because <laughs> it's like a movie set in oh. my head. Like, ever since I was a kid, I would dream that I was in this giant-ass, like, shopping mall. Mm-hmm. It was indoors. There's a huge water fountain, kind of like the Animal Crossing water fountain okay. in the middle of it. And there's benches all around. And then there's like three or four levels. Is that like your happy place in your dreams? I don't know. But every time I go there, my recurring dream is back to the Backstreet Boys. So oh, I had this boy. as a child. And I also had it recently as an adult. But I would meet up with the Backstreet Boys and we'd be BFFs. Okay. And they would perform like on real. the stage of that fountain. So you're just living your best life. Yeah, I had the greatest dreams. <laughs> wow, I used to have your recurring dream nightmare. It was like me losing my mom in like a Walmart setting, kind of. Oh. And then like a spirit would sweep her away and I would go running for her. And it was like the recurring dream I had from like age 8 to like 10. Aww. Yeah, That's it was scary. pretty awful. Is Walmart your scary place? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Any shop, it would any, be, like, re- re- any anxiety at Walmart. Yeah, exactly. It can definitely be a scary place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, right, so I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Um, I'm Ari. I'm an Aquarius Sun, Scorpio Moon, Libra Rising. Um, and it's pretty much the same with me. Uh, the tools of definition that I... Uh, work with is um well I've been practicing the craft for a while since I was a kid and I'll go into my background about that a little bit um and my introduction to tarot is actually kind of similar to Dave's introduction as well um but my main uh tool of definition is astrology I've been familiar with astrology for quite some time but I recently started picking up um natal chart readings um, over the past few years, so it's been a little bit. But as far as my childhood goes, um, it's a little bit different. My parents were not very religious growing up in the same way um, I would consider it religious in a Western household. My parents were definitely superstitious, but that's just because of the background I have. So growing up, magic and witchcraft is definitely a thing in our culture. Uh, but of course it's, uh, we have, um, I'm Cambodian and a lot of our culture is derived from like, uh, I want to say we have influences of like Hinduism and Buddhism basically is the main influence. So my parents were Buddhist growing up, but my dad also practiced Christianity a little bit because he was sponsored by a church program, I believe. Um, coming to America as a refugee. So there is a little bit of influence in that. Um, he never really like was gave a strict household though. He was definitely very traditional, but as traditional as my parents tried to be, they never really raised me that way. They raised three very strong independent ladies. Yes. Independent women in the house. Exactly. So it's like it, it was it was kind of um it was weird growing up because they raised us 
with education being a main focus and they kind of just gave us the freedom to do whatever we wanted to do Mm -hmm. but then Mm -hmm. later on growing up they tried to instill their traditional values on us which didn't work because you raised us not only did you raise us in america with our freedom but you didn't instill those ideas uh, those values on us growing up as kids you know so it's like you're expecting me to like do womanly things, tasks, quotation marks, like, you know, womanly chores, like cleaning and cooking and doing that for the household, even though really growing up, it was just more like, oh, just focus on your education and follow your dreams, you know, blah, 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 blah. That Shout kind of stuff. Our parents doing you would that be to totally <laughs> different if you did get those values. Right. Yes, yeah. it would be totally different. And luck- <laughs> the funny thing <laughs> is, I didn't grow up in my hometown. I grew up here in Vegas, so that definitely. Yeah. So you like us? You're a Vegas kid. I'm a rebel. That's that's <laughs> right? for sure. That that was a really strong influence. Oh, anyways, I digress. So going back <laughs> onto the topic, so my mom is definitely um, magic. And spirituality definitely runs in in my family, for sure. And I know for a fact, because I got those influences from my mom and my aunt. My mom is also a Scorpio. Shout yeah, out to the Scorpio powers. powers. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I found out you recently... You can't get shit with them. Exactly. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. I have a Scorpio moon, and you can definitely not bullshit with me. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's funny because my mom always knew. Mm-hmm. I was like, uh, yeah, I can't lie to her. I never <laughs> lied to her. And, yeah. the, and the thing about Scorpio energy is that we will know, but we won't let you know. We won't say that we know. We'll just let you, like, we'll give you the choice of whether you want to be honest or not. Yeah. Yep. Don't use like Scorpio my mom. rising sign. That mm-hmm. is my mom, too. She's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to let you lie. And then. You'll want to tell the truth. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You'll want to tell the truth later. <laughs> it's those eyes. It's yeah, that, oh my that, god, that, the that Scorpio eyes. eyes. My mom has that look, and every single friend I've had who has met her in person always gives me the same two responses. That she's very scary looking, like she's very intimidating, and also that she has that, you know, that Scorpio stare. That like oh she's like your mom. It's like oh she's, she's very mom. alluring. She uh, has that mysterious alluring intensity yeah. about her, but she's also yeah. very scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's also I like she's intense, but I like her. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I inherited that from my mom. Thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, some wretching witch face. Yes. So yeah. I actually got into witchcraft through my aunt. And it wasn't even, it wasn't like, hey, we're going to practice some spells and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't even like that. It was just, it was very natural to me. It was, it wasn't a concept that was like, I I don't know. I guess it wasn't like when you grow up in a religious household and people are like, oh, witchcraft is the devil, blah, blah, blah. That's bad stuff. It wasn't anything like that. It was very accepting in my culture and in my household as well. Um, So... I started diving into it as a kid. Um, Even, like, in elementary school, I had friends who were kind of, like, into it. And so I was sort of in the coven, too, as a little (laughs) kid, not realizing it. I I did a blood oath when I was a kid. Oh, shit. I was in the bathroom. See? See? So (laughs) we all had our little elementary school Yeah, we all had our little um, introduction to, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Practicing witchcraft by myself and practicing it with other people, though, that's a very different experience. Very, very different experience. Um, and then again with tarot. I, tarot and astrology, it was something... They were subjects I felt that ha- I had always known. I didn't even know tarot was an actual thing until I went to Cambodia with my family for... I visit. I went to visit Cambodia as a teenager with my family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my aunts there got their cards read by a psychic. Yeah. And she was reading their cards, but she was reading it with a regular deck of playing cards. Oh, a lot of people, a lot of people in New Orleans do that, actually. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And at that time, I knew, I, to voodoo. I felt there was magic. I felt like you can divine with cards, oh, yeah. playing cards, mm-hmm. but at that time, I didn't know what tarot was. I can show you a magic trick later with the regular playing cards. So I, I yeah. tried it. I tried it myself before I even learned about it. Like, I was like, I feel like there's meaning to this. I feel like hearts probably have to do with emotions or something like that. Diamonds most likely probably have to do with, like, finance or something like that. The first time I did tarot cards, actually, was doing a magic trick like that. I had a... We did the houses mm-hmm. with, the, with the suits, mm-hmm. and I read them with... Um, 
That's why. That's why I learned how to paint tarot cards. I do tarot cards actually with playing cards. Okay. Yeah. See. Yeah. See, there we go. So that was the same with me. That was my first introduction to tarot. That's so crazy. And then, yeah, like you just right, exactly. It just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. So when that popped up, um, I was like, oh shit, so this is an actual thing. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I come back from Cambodia, and I was like, I look it up, and I'm like, okay, so there's a name for it. It's actually tarot, and that's a whole thing. It's a whole ass thing. And I was like, yeah, exactly. That was my spiritual awakening with tarot. But the thing was, traditionally in in tarot, and it's not a really big thing nowadays. I feel like nowadays, when you if you want to get into tarot, you definitely can, and you can go out and pick the cards that suits you. Uh, but traditionally, there was a, a theme where if you get introduced to tarot, usually you're supposed to be given like your first deck yeah. is yeah. usually a gift from other people. Yeah, that's why. I- yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's that's what happened with me. It that's was why either... I even told you when I got your deck. I was like, no, let me get let me buy you a deck. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Here's your introduction. Yeah, I have to buy you a deck. I, I have and it, again, as now <laughs> with with modern with like with how things are now, people people want to gatekeep with that and you know we're not saying that's how it things should be we're just saying this was how i was taught yeah this was exactly what we learned when we were young yeah growing up and it was the same with me you either created your first deck or your first deck was a gift and that was what it was for me um for 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 my introduction to tarot i not only was i given decks every single deck i have received in all those years up until now had always been a gift for me, but I did create my first deck, and my first deck wasn't even following the traditional tarot. My first deck was based off of the planets, and this Aww. this was when I knew about astrology, but I only knew about sun suns at the time. I didn't know how to read charts yet, but right. for some uh. reason, I felt that the planets were all very important factors into it. Uh-huh. So I first learned how to read tarot using astrology, and that was when I was 15. So that's my introduction to that. Do you still have that deck? I don't. Because I created Aww. it with cardstock. Aww. I created it with cardstock. Each each card was a planet. If you actually look around now, they do have astrology-based tarot decks, which I've is really it. cool. It's yeah, really cool. Yeah. No, I want yours. Yes, I've been... <laughs> <laughs> I may, who knows? Maybe I may, will make one. Maybe yeah. later down the line, I'll publish my own. Oh, we'll see about mm. that. <laughs> But manifesting it especially now that i actually have knowledge of tarot and astrology like official knowledge we can probably make that happen oh yeah that'd be yeah. that'd be super fun actually but yes so that's that was basically that's my quick introduction to the uh our, the occult we'll definitely cover more about this with each of us with our backgrounds and things that we've done our experiences and stuff um well we just kind of want to explain our podcast just a little bit better so that you guys have like you know, a better feel for what it's going to be about. Um, and I just wanted to ask you too. So what is Dolce Vita to you? Explain basically why we pick pleasure to be our life force and why we incorporate it into our lives. I feel like <laughs> it's, it's the hedonistic pleasure of the world. Like I feel like I, I'm a, I am a person of pleasure of my body. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, I love the spiritual pleasure, but also I'm very into, like, pleasuring my 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 flesh, <laughs> sort of way. Like uh-huh. my my gar- my guardian goddess is Venus, and I repre- I represent everything that she represents: love, pleasure, um, all of that. All that incorporates into everything I do, even with magic, even just like going down the street or talking to someone. I I incorporate. The pleasurable aspect. It's a pleasure principle. Yes. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but what, yeah. What's that's what it means pleasure? to me. Yeah. And I absolutely agree. Pika, how, how, what does pleasure mean to you? What is Dolce Vita? Mine is going to be very simple. I just like the finer things in life. I like <laughs> to treat myself. Yes. I like taking bubble baths. I like indulging in food. I like conversations, the universe, mm-hmm. life. <laughs> Anything that makes me happy. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, Anything exactly. that makes me happy makes me feel the pleasures if, of the world. If I'm gonna make myself happy, I'm gonna make other people happy too. Exactly. Mm-hmm. With my body, with anything I can offer. That's that's very Venusian, and that's why we decided to create this podcast because exactly. we're here to talk about the finer things in life. 
But even if things aren't going well, we are here to help you through it. Yes. You know? We're all going through it right now. And it's unfortunate that most of us are stuck at home or scared to go outside of our houses. Dealing with this virus right now is um, it's a scary time. Mm-hmm. Not only mm-hmm. with the virus, just like everything political and BLM. And it's a very confusing, weird Pluto return. Yes. yes. <laughs> we have five more years of the, the Pluto's return. But after that, just uh. a huge reset. Yeah. yeah. Millennials are suffering. Suffer. <laughs> Suffer. <laughs> Scorpio Pluto and Gen generation. Gen Z is just like, I'm here for it. <laughs> Gen Z's like, this Let is me helping make my us. Talks. Yeah. <laughs> like, we'll I love be getting this. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all here. The press Gen Z is like, eh. <laughs> Like, this is just life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've been experiencing life for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we lived through, like, what, two pandemics? This is an actual pandemic. We're mm-hmm. in lockdown to mm-hmm. our house. But yeah, we lived through our, the recession shit. back in when we graduated. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. That was the so housing shit. market decline. Mm-hmm. George Bush. <laughs> All that. 9 11. Now we're dealing with Trump. Like, this is just, uh. like, the millennial. <laughs> the universe was just like, okay, you guys kind of like sat through the 90s for like a little bit. Let's shake things up. Right, right. <laughs> Let's shake things up for them. See, I thought it was the whole, we're all joking like, hey, we need another pandemic because there is too many people in the world and we're like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> it's like when you manifest something, you didn't mean to manifest. Yeah. It's like, whoops, I didn't mean to manifest that much. <laughs> and that was like a whole culture that was manifesting that crap yeah awesome <laughs> so basically that's dolce vita to us we are the venusian musings podcast and that's what we'll be talking about the finer things in life and how to incorporate that into your life even when life sucks <laughs> all right so drop. <laughs> we hope you will enjoy our podcast we'd love to hear your thoughts Feel free to share your stories with us. You can reach us on our Instagram at Darlings of Venus. Our episodes will be uploaded on most platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube as well. Um, our ads will be at Darlings of Venus or at Darlings of Venusia, whichever is available for us to grab. But anyways, um, we'll go ahead and um, talk about where you can reach us individually. So go ahead. Uh, you can reach me, Day, at um, your friendly with at your friendly hood witch bitch on Twitter. And it's the same handle on um, Instagram as well. I believe my ad is at Moon Disco actually on on Twitter. I think it has like a three in there yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, at Moon Disco pretty much. But if you search up your friendly neighbor or friendly neighborhood witch bitch, I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes. Form, so. Yes. And of course, Day will be offering, you know, uh, we'll be offering art services as well, so you can always reach out to us. Yeah, you can always reach out to me for tarot card reading. Um, I will, if I'm not, if I don't answer you right away, I will eventually get back to you. I still have people asking me on uh, Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat for reading, so I will get to you. <laughs> Definitely. You're a busy boy. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's just recently too, jeez. It's a pandemic. Yeah. That's why. Like, yeah. What's going on? Yes. Uh, I was like, me busy. too, hold on. <laughs> okay. And Pika, where can we reach you? Uh, you can find me Instagram, Twitter, it's aesthetics A E S T E P H T I C S. I'm pretty much the only one. You can also Google that name and my pictures will pop up. Just so you know, <laughs> I may have Googled stock myself. I did that too, actually. It was only me, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah. I like well, wait, like I like to check on myself from time to time. Right. You know, kind of clean up I have to know what's out there in the internet <laughs> world. Yeah. Exactly. That's what we got to do, especially since we're stuck at home. Yourself, you found none? I found that I was still linked to a dating website. I was like, what is this? So I had to delete it. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Well, it's so funny. You know how there was a meme recently about um, Googling your your at, your handle, and then seeing what pops up on images, yeah. on Google Images? I saw that on Twitter. I saw yeah. mine, and apparently someone out there is using my handle as a furry artist, a furry porn Ooh. artist. So, Shut up. Yeah. So if you're out there using my handle, you better get rid of it because, like, I I'm okay with furry porn art. That's fine. You do you, but don't be using my handle. Shout out to furry porn. <laughs> so yes, you can reach me at luxurious. That's L U X U R I A S. My website is also uh, luxurious.net. 
that's where you will find me and that's going to be my handle on pretty much any platform um but mostly i've just been using instagram and that's what i'll be using for astrology um but thank you guys for listening this is the venusian musings podcast and what are we you guys we are the darlings Darlings of of venus Venus. (laughs) (laughs) and um thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy our future episodes Bye bye bye